Imagine a world without smartphones, electric cars, or even wind turbines. Sounds impossible, right? But all these modern technologies rely on one hidden ingredient, rare earth minerals. You probably don't think about them, but they're everywhere. And right now, the most powerful nations on planet Earth are logged in high stacks rays to control them. So, what exactly are rare earth minerals? Rare earths are a group of 17 elements, with names like neodymium, diasprosium, and tabium. They are not actually rare in the Earth's crust, but they are rarely found in high concentrations, which makes them difficult and expensive to mine. And yet, they are absolutely essential for making high-tech devices, from iPhones to fighter jets, electric vehicles to satellite systems. Now here's where it gets interesting. One country dominates this game. China. For decades, China invested heavily in mining and refining rare earths. Today, it controls over 60% of global production and nearly 90% of refining capacity. That's a big deal, because whoever controls rare earths doesn't just control tech, they control the future. Think about it. Electric vehicles are the future of transportation. Wind and solar power are central in fighting climate change. Meteor technologies depend on precision-guided systems, which use rare earths to operate. This means rare earths aren't just about business, they are about energy security, national defense, and global power. So why are other nations scrambling now? The answer is simple. Dependence breeds vulnerability. In 2010, China cut off rare earths exports to Japan during a diplomatic dispute. That shocked the world. It made governments realize just how fragile the supply chain is. And now, in an era of growing geopolitical tensions between the two superpowers, the United States of America and China, countries don't want to be caught off guard again. Let's break down what major players are doing. The United States has been reviving its rare earth industry. In California, the mountain pass mine once closed, is operating again. But mining is just one step. The real bottleneck is refining, and that's where the US still depends on China. So Washington is now funding domestic processing facilities and building partnerships with allies like Australia and Canada in order to create a rare earth supply chain that bypasses China entirely. Europe is also joining the rest. The European Union has listed rare earths as critical raw materials. Countries like Sweden and Norway are exploring their mineral reserves, while companies are investing in new processing technologies. The EU's goal is to become self-sufficient and reduce dependence on foreign sources, especially in a world shifting toward green technology. Meanwhile, Africa is emerging as a major frontier. Countries like Burundi, Madagascar and Malawi have untapped rare earth deposits. And global powers are already eyeing them. But here's the twist. There is concern about whether African nations will benefit fairly or be exploited in a new form of resource colonialism. Who will control the mining rights? Who will profit? These are questions that could shape the continent's future. And then there is sustainability. Rare earth mining is often environmentally destructive. Toxic waste, radiation exposure, and groundwater pollution are serious problems. So while demand is skyrocketing, so is pressure to develop cleaner mining methods and recycling systems. In fact, some companies are now extracting rare earths from old electronics turning e-west into treasure. Now here is something to think about. This race isn't economic, it's deeply strategic. Whoever secures a reliable supply of rare earths will shape the future of clean energy, digital infrastructure and military superiority. So where is this all heading? Most likely toward a multipolar rare earth economy. China will remain dominant for now, but the world is shifting. 
the United States, the European Union, Australia and other powers are building networks to secure alternative sources. Countries are investing billions into mining, refining and innovation. There is even talks of creating strategic stockpiles, like how countries reserve oil in case of emergencies. In the end, the race for rare earths is really a race of technological independence. It's about preparing for a future where energy, defense and innovation rely on materials most people like you and me cannot even pronounce.